So in this video, I'm going to show you how I solved case number two of the ESSR quiz in Lugano 2024, where I was one of the quiz winners. This was a very difficult musculoskeletal radiology quiz. And in this series, I'm going to reveal how I came up with the answers. And this is now case number two. Now, case number two is a little bit special because initially I you know, look at it and it seems quite obvious, but then it still it isn't. So it was kind of like a, in a way, like a little bit of a tricky case. Uh, I got the answer right but actually not quite right. So you can see this in the end. So the first thing we notice is that these are a set of adjacent slices of a knee in two different weightings, T1 and T2 fat set. And you wonder why do they show three adjacent slices? So we have, they kind of like want to tell us there is one particular detail we, which we have to see or follow through, through all of the slices. And it's actually the same also for the, you know, for the other images so they were a set of three panels so we have case number two continued when the patient was initially 53 and then 57 and then lastly 58 with worsening knee pain also in the night time so when we go first through the pure description we can see there is an irregular lesion here and centrally t1 hyperintense lesions uh, or stuff too and t1 hyperintense and some of that gets suppressed so we know we have a fat containing lesion and by that we all are very quickly in the territory of a bone marrow infarction already now that wouldn't be a very challenging case if it's just bone marrow infarction, but we have features of it and it looks like it. So ultimately we have to think what else could there be. So we can see a ganglion cyst. And so I think the reason why they show adjacent panels is to see for or to look for a particular detail. Is there a connection between the two? And there actually is. And you can see here is a tiny channel or defect in the cortical bone adjacent or at the level of the PCL insertion, which connects this ganglion cyst here into the bone. So it's a ganglion cyst with intraosseous extension here. Now this is basically what we see on this first panel. Ganglion cyst connection into the bone and then here you know connection into this bone marrow infarction. And then we can check the second image. We don't see much else here. If you notice the ACL here was still fine with 53 years old. Okay so let's go to the second panel when the patient was 57 years so it's four years later and we can see obviously the lesion has shrunken it's much smaller now and I go back you can see it's very big and this is the same slice right so we can see it's a shrinking lesion and by that basically all the malignant tumors or even like benign tumors are out of the game and I think bone marrow infarction is really the only left hypothesis there uh, for the most part. Now again why would they show three images and why would they include a funny coronal view here uh, to see where we are or which level and I think it shows either even better here where we have a bit of a channel here or this injustice extension of this uh, ganglion which appears to be a bit smaller. One thing we noticed here there's some cystic degeneration or beginning mucoid degeneration of the PCL which might or might not have to do anything with the ganglion here. Other than that we don't get much information here so we go to the last slide and here patient is now 58 years old and we can still see the infarction still is a bit smaller um, you know it's it's not as big as it used to be in the first panel like here very big and then here it's getting even a little bit more smaller but we notice now that there is new bone marrow edema around the lesion now i have to admit that i didn't notice this uh, when i was going through the case on my phone so uh, the image quality was also a bit different uh, than maybe in retrospect but or the reflection i don't know like i didn't really notice okay there is extensive bone marrow, well it's not extensive but that there is bone marrow edema around this a presumed bone marrow infarction. Because of a lack of differentials, I essentially came up with the idea, okay, so we have a bone marrow infarction and we have a ganglion cyst with an intraosseous extension. And that was my answer. And I can show you right here uh, where I wrote this. So bone marrow infarct with intraosseous ganglion cyst. And this is what I wrote down in the, in the answer sheet. Now let's have a look at the solution of this case. Let me just turn this down. So this was the slide that they showed after discussing the case. And it's very interesting because the hypothesis in this particular case is that there was initially a ganglion cyst with intraosseous migration or intraosseous um, migration of synovial fluid, basically a ganglion cyst here, and or like a, a geode or ganglion, which then creates an uh, or goes into the bone through a small cortical defect. Okay, so this is how the ganglion cyst goes into the bone and then because the fluid and it makes an inflammation there causes a bone marrow inflammation which then led to the bone marrow infarction or to the necrosis of the fatty bone marrow. So the hypothesis is that the ganglion or the intraosseous ganglion actually caused the bone marrow infarction. So this is not something that I had in mind when I wrote my answer. For me these were two separate things that just got connected but I think in this particular instance the hypothesis was that you have the ganglion cyst it goes into the bone and then creates a bone marrow infarction after this inflammation period. And they can show regression, so I wasn't too surprised by that. And the edema here 
which I didn't realize actually shows that there is again a, a more extensive connection or, or somehow here although we didn't see that particularly on the images but that can be so we know from other locations where you have a ganglion system into the bone they can often show surrounding bone edema from increased pressure etc now as for the differentials and just assist here it's half of the story only epidermoid inclusion cyst would be special osteomyelitis doesn't fit for me like the the core temporal evolution doesn't fit any tumors don't really fit uh, because of the evolution again and metastasis is very very unlikely so yeah uh, they reference this article here where they have something like this described so you can check this out if you want so this was case number two and if you liked the video then that's great hopefully you learned something and if you want to see case one then go check this link out if you want a case three then maybe just yeah you have to subscribe and wait until i do case number three all right thanks for watching and see you next time Bye bye